Next, someone who, for many of you, might not need any introduction. I'm going to invite Dr. Nick up here. He Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Chip. Yeah, why don't we have a seat, and um, he's going to proceed to give us a history lesson. First, we a history gotta, lesson, that's we, right. We have to start with what's going on with that loud Firstly, shirt. Firstly, uh, the T-shirt. Yeah, what's going on? This is a health and safety T-shirt for conferences. This, uh, if you go through the exhibition hall, uh, this, is, this prevents you from having accidents, collisions with enterprise salespeople. <laughs> Has it worked? <laughs> It's exceptional. <laughs> Couldn't get a beer from SAP, but other than that, it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> you're, you're, it's not your personality, it's the shirt. <laughs> Had to get someone else to get it for me. Okay, okay, you've got it. All right, well, um, in all seriousness, um, you Are there more beers from SAP today? <laughs> <laughs> and what time's that open? <laughs> Woo! Anyway. So. So, Dr. Nick, <coughs> excuse me, you've been in the, the, uh, the Cloud Foundry community for quite some time. Um, give, us, give us your story. Why did you get involved originally? Uh, so, um, I was at a company called EngineYard as uh, VP of Technology, and uh, EngineYard, EngineYard was, um, if, if you were to describe them today, they might be DevOps as a service. Uh, five years ago, we called ourselves Platform as a Service, and, and perhaps more authentically, we were a web hosting company. And, All right, um, so websites. Yeah, we're Got webmaster it. as a service. And um, <laughs> that's a good one, actually. I had no thought of it. We hired all the Spider, Spider Man. And, um, and we, we had built a product that, that ran on this new thing called Amazon, which was the only one of its kind. And, and uh, we'd used uh, uh, a Gen 2 as the base OS for, for historical reasons. And like all historical software decisions, they, you can never kill them, um, like, like Monet in Bosch. Um, and so, so when you know, we, we in five years that we'd run uh, engineer run its product on Amazon, we'd shipped one AMI. This is before Packer and other tools. Like we had no tool chain. Um, we were using Chef. Uh, the, there was a whole pollution of our Chef versus the customer Chef. I had, over 2,000 customers, I had just seen so many problems exist because you know we were at the bleeding edge, and the customers at the bleeding edge of this whole new space of of, of running you know systems and, and, and deploying them daily. And um, yeah, so I saw Bosch April 2012. So I had all these problems in my head, desperate for solutions, knowing that Engineer had spent tens of millions of dollars building its solution to date. And then Bosch came out and said, yeah, that's, yeah, that's all solved. You don't need to worry about that stuff anymore. So I was, I was uh, in love with Bosch since you From know, the beginning. Like five and a half years ago. Love at first sight. Yeah. Love at first sight. You trusted an early version, though. Trust's the wrong word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Bosch, my relationship with Bosch is, is probably one of abuse. Um, <laughs> I love do we, do it, we need to get you a counselor? That's right, very much so. Yeah. Many, many project managers for Bosch have come and gone. Uh, <laughs> but we have Dimitri now, and it's good. No, no, I love all the product managers, but it's a tough project. But it's, been a, but it's been a long journey for you, right? I mean, you've, you've really seen it evolve, um, I, I think, pretty dramatically. Some of the basic Oh, it's, it's still incredible. Uh, look, I feel bad for anyone that, that saw Bosch five years ago, couldn't figure out how to make it work, mm. and has written it off as something to never investigate again, because sometimes we, we, we do that yep. uh, accidentally. And, um, but no, I mean, at, by the end of 2012, I'd started Stark and Wayne, which is going to be a consultancy around Cloud Foundry and Bosch. Um, you know, anytime you build a, a new business based on a technology, you take a risk that that technology becomes irrelevant. You know, the next year or the year after, it came out Docker, and, and we had that whole crazy era of, of why, why, you know, why X? We have Docker now. Like, why Bosch we have Docker? Why Cloud Foundry we have Docker? Why Doritos we have Docker? Everything was up for grabs. Um, and obviously, you should eat Doritos. They're delicious. This is a sponsored track. You can have Doritos, isn't it? I should talk <laughs> about Doritos. You, you, it turns out you can use multiple tools, right? Right. You can have your Doritos and UCF. You should definitely eat Doritos. And um, so yeah, but um, and then you know, then the pivotal. Uh, sort of came out of, of VMware, then the foundation yep. came out of Pivotal, and, uh, and it's been really, um, as an open source oriented person, as a, as a small consultancy, it's been uh, truly fascinating seeing the, the, you know, the, the, all the organizations and working with, with yeah, Swisscom in the early days for many years, and, then, and, and playing with IBM and, and their people, it's been, uh, um, the whole community has been truly fascinating. Cool. Well, obviously, you know, you, you, you bet on 
the Cloud Foundry technology, the Cloud Foundry Bosch, um, for your business. So how's that going? Well, it was a bit of an easy bet, really, because it worked, right? Good. <laughs> I, what I'm not very good at is telling other people they're wrong. So like, I'd very much like to be the type of person that could go into a place that likes Chef and just just crap all over them about how terrible Chef is and how much better Bosch is. But I'm not that type of person, sadly, because that would be a lot of fun. And um, I also got to tell you, I don't believe you. You don't believe me. No. I love I do, the Chef people. Are lovely. I, I've, Absolutely. It, you had an announcement with Chef. Yeah, we uh, we've been working with Chef, yeah. the company for uh, for the Habitat project. So uh, Habitat's like their new idea around bringing up uh, distributed apps, so to speak, or how to describe them so they can form a cluster without needing a secondary thing like etcd or console um, and running the processes and everything. So like, we think Habitat's really interesting. Running Habitat on Bosch is interesting. Running Habitat, we, the, the, the thing we announced with, with, uh, with Habitat was uh, you can make something in Habitat and then do a Habitat export and have it run on Cloud Foundry. So even the Habitat people, for all their wonderfulness, still have a problem with how to run their stuff. Um, unfortunately, you know, they work for Chef, so they have to use Chef stuff. But it's, um, no, no, no. I, I, I thought you said you liked them. I like, I like we the love people. all of the open source community like that I, we interact Five with. years at Engineer were harsh times with Chef. It was, um, okay, I'm definitely I saw a lot of Chef, a lot this. of Chef, a lot of nasty <laughs> Chef. Um, and I'm sure all Chef is lovely now. <laughs> but um, no, it's, it's, so yeah, part of, part of evangelism uh, is, is just being really happy about what you've got and just enjoying sure, it. Sure, sure. Um, and so... Uh, yeah, I mean, over the five years, we've been making documentation and libraries and tutorials and videos, and um, and that's yeah. So it's nice to come to events where people come and tell you that they watch your videos. And yeah, that's pretty cool. So you're working on something though. You've been typing. I've been typing. Yeah. Oh, can no, I why don't you tell them? Is? What is <laughs> You've been writing a book. Oh, the book. Oh, shit. Clearly, it's not that important. Now, the reason, the reason I get confused is because literally the last thing I was typing for my own entertainment was I was trying to boshify a chef server because I thought that'd be really funny. Um, <laughs> you know, but how does Chip know that? Um, so, yeah, so over five years, um, yeah, in the early days, I was like the world's number one evangelist. Uh, I would tell everyone about Bosch. And after a while, I was like, fine. It's He's also thing. modest, too. Uh, world's number one evangelist. Out of a group of one, it was a pretty... <laughs> Fair enough. You were also the worst. I was also the... Was literally <laughs> still am the worst Bosch evangelist. And um, but yeah, recently I started watching... Uh, I started learning um, like some other ecosystem type things. I was looking at TensorFlow and Arduino and just other things. And so when you go out and you have to learn a thing from scratch, it can be very humbling to have to not know anything. Absolutely. Like you do Arduino, it's the first thing you do is to try to make a light blink. And you go, yes! The light blinks! I am god of, of electronics. Um, but that's only after you've watched like five YouTube videos. Uh, <laughs> and, and read a lot of really confusing right. documents. And, so, and then it makes you realize this, how, how hard Bosch might be relative to making a light blink on yep. an Arduino device. And so I, I came away from that experience um, very much a lot of empathy for all the people I don't know yep. who, who might never have succeeded with Bosch and perhaps weren't forced to learn it. Mm. Um, and, and, and came out the other side uh, thrilled with it. So yeah, I, I, I all of a sudden you know, had this new sense of energy of, and, and a sense of urgency to sort of write a, a book. I'm really excited about that. I, I will make sure this there is, are this jokes. This is clearly a, there will a be chip publisher announcement. There. Yeah, there will, I will make sure there are chip references in this so that I, I know that you did read it. <laughs> I'll misspell your name and see if you fix it. <laughs> no, it's, it's on a website called ultimateguidetobosch.com. Um, it's still, still being written, but it's, it's there, and, and, and if you've got new staff uh, and you want them to have a, 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 some additional materials for, for understanding this thing that you've given them. Um, I mean, to me, the, the key metric is, is whether we start getting people going to their local DevOps meetup, their local Docker meetup, their local language meetup, and actually saying, I saw this shiny thing, and I desperately need you all to see it. Um, so that, to me, is the, is the key metric of whether we start to get people excited at meetups. I think that's great. I'm really excited about that. Yeah. And if you want to be one of those people and you want to uh, perhaps talk about um, Bosch or whatever, yeah, obviously the Stackelman booth, I'm going to hang out there for most of the day, or the Singapore room where we're hosting the extensions track. Excellent. Uh, so come, come chat with us about all shiny things. Great. Except if you're put off by the shirt. Yeah, you obviously stand appropriate distance from the t-shirt. All right, good deal. Thank you, Dr. Nick. Appreciate Thanks, you coming. Mike. Thank <clears throat> you.